very much alive. D-Day, the 6th of June, 1944. More than 6,000 vessels crossed the Channel to France. Over 158,000 soldiers landed on the beaches of Normandy. Some 4,400 Allied servicemen lost their lives that day. But amongst the bloodshed and the chaos, one man typified the determination and spirit to stand up against the Nazis. He was Private Bill Millen, piper of the 1st Special Service Brigade Commandos. This rare photograph captures the moment he dashed ashore that day, clutching his bagpipes in readiness for the deadliest performance of his life. And here on Sword Beach, he played his pipes through a huge barrage of shell and gunfire, urging his comrades on in their fight for freedom. Born in 1922, Bill Millen joined the TA aged just 17. He then played the pipes for several Scottish battalions before joining the commandos. His son John remembers a unique man. Well, my father was a, essentially two different people. He was my dad and he was a D-Day bagpiper. And my father was a fairly quiet, modest, even self-effacing man. But when asked to play the bagpipes, he became this animated man. Bill joined a long tradition of pipers in the British Army. Their role was to inspire advancing troops with tunes from historic battles. They presented an easy target for the enemy, and so many were killed in World War I, they were banned from the front line. But fellow Scott and commanding officer Lord Lovett refused the military ruling and told Bill to strike up his pipes in the face of enemy fire. That's the English War Office. You and I are both Scots so I would like you to play the pipes when we land in France. My father was 21 in June 1944. He was frightened, but he had a job to do. And as these commemorative paintings show, Bill piped the troops through a hail of German gunfire. The only man in a kilt, the only man playing music, while around him, hundreds fell. He marched up and down Sword Beach, urging them forward with the sound of his pipes. Every year he could, Bill returned to Normandy to join in the remembrance of those who fought and fell that day. This year, he was to attend a special ceremony remembering the role he'd played. He'd hoped to be there to see a statue of himself unveiled at the beach site. Dad had an idea that he, he wouldn't get to see the unveiling of a statue. He said, Will there be pipers there? I said, oh, of course there'll be pipers. There'll be hundreds of pipers. There won't be a million piper, though, will there? As he'd feared, Bill didn't live to make the return visit for his special ceremony, leaving it to John to fulfil a promise he'd made to his father. I will learn at least one tune, one of your favourites. I'll learn that for the day. When Bill Millen came ashore that day playing his pipes, he helped his comrades get through one of the bloodiest battles of the Second World War. Today, on that same stretch of beach, in memory of his dad, John will be playing in public for the first time. I've tried to wear and carry as much of my father's possessions as I possibly can right, today. Right, right. So, so in some way, he's here. Just as they do every year, the Pipers join the parade. But this year, there's a new member in the ranks, John Millen son of the man whose heroic story they all know so well. Now, hundreds of pipers from 21 different countries are represented in that parade. They're, they're, they're playing for him in, in the remembrance of my dad. And now overlooking the beach, the statue to Bill Millen, the brave lone piper, is unveiled. permanent reminder of his courage and bravery that has come to symbolise the spirit of all who fought and fell in the D-Day landings.
J James Scott from the Royal Signals. Now, it's a remarkable story, Larry. So how was John feeling? Obviously, he was very nervous about the unveiling because of what he had to do. But when it all died down, what was it like for him? I think the thing is that when it all died down finally, it was uh, the whole thing had been terribly, terribly moving for him and his yeah. family after all this wait for it. And the real problem was the following day, he went back to look at it. And when he left, it was as though, as he said, he was leaving his father behind. That was the real problem. And, I mean, it's, you can't think of the bravery, can you, that it must have took from Bell to well, do I what mean, he did. I mean, just imagine where we are now, standing on a beach, very similar to the one over there in Normandy, massive, and flying through the air, thousands of tons of projectiles, red-hot projectiles, and this guy's marching up and down in yeah. his kilt, playing the bagpipes, trying to encourage everybody to come ashore. And the thing is, he didn't want a statue, did he? So no, he didn't want a statue. He was a very, very modest man. But in the end, they managed to persuade him and said, look, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do this. We're going to commemorate what went on. And we figure that you represent the bravery of these people. Yeah. So in the, I think sort of rather reluctantly, he said, well, as long as the detail's right, as long as it's dressed, as long as the statue is dressed in detail the same way that I was, yeah. in the right kilt, in the right fittings, the right belts, everything else, right down to the final, final detail, then then that's fine. And it was very much the right kilt, because that kilt itself had some incredible history, absolutely. even family history. Absolutely. His father, Bill's father, John was the man that was the subject of the yeah, film, but yeah. John's, uh, Bill's father wore that kilt in Flanders in, the, in, the, in World War I, and, and he was a piper himself. And you can see that kilt. You can see that yeah. kilt. It's down in the museum at Dawlish. And the remarkable thing is you can actually see the bagpipes as well because the bagpipes although he as well. came off unscathed, the pipes didn't. The pipes took a hit a little while later, but the pipes now are in the museum at Dawlish and then the replacement pipes that they had to, he had to use after they were, that were damaged were subsequently put back together and they're now 